What is good guys, it is Reed and welcome back to a super special video. Today we got Mentalism 101, episode three, and this is a special one because it's all about these guys. Pieces of paper, very exciting I know. But not just any piece of paper, these are billets. And in this episode we're gonna get into billets. What are billets, what are they used for, how can we use them? This is the first episode so far in this series that we're gonna actually get into some a little bit more methodological stuff, some stuff that you guys are really gonna love. You know, the first two were very theoretical. You know, you guys are starting to itch for some mentalism tutorials and, and some actual techniques. So we're gonna dive into that in this video to start. You're gonna get a lot of great value out of this. You're gonna be able to know what anyone is thinking of at any time with just a piece of paper and a Sharpie or a pen. You know, some people shy away from billets and I'm gonna talk about a bit why that is and why you shouldn't be afraid to use them and why they're a perfect and almost necessary complement in me mentalism and how to use them properly. So this is an episode I am super excited for. It's gonna be jam packed. There'll probably even be a part two on billets because there's just so much to say. Now just before we jump into that, if you guys have not heard, the website has just recently been launched. We got some awesome merch on there. We got shirts. We got hats, we got uh, sweaters, and if you have not also seen, we have this special edition RF Slights t-shirt that's the show me a trick tee. And there's actually a full three phase routine built directly into the fabric of this t-shirt. You need nothing at all to perform it besides having this t-shirt on. It's a killer sort of gag routine with an amazing climax. So go check that out, link in the description, and go check out the rest of the website if you wanna check out some private lessons, I offer those as well. Just click that link in the description. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. Don't forget to like this video if you like this series and let's jump right in. So let's start with the what. What is this mystery stack of papers that I'm holding? Well, these are billets. A billet is essentially just a piece of paper that we use in mentalism. It's a, it's multiple pieces of paper, a stack of piece of paper. And it's nice, they're similar to cards. They're a stack of piece of paper. Now, as you can see, I have a very small stack right now. I only have like five billets in this stack because I'm running low. I gotta get some more, but essentially it is a deck of cards, but they're all blank in a sense. You can think of it like that way. They're pieces of paper. Uh, you can really use anything. You can use post-it notes. I used to use post-it notes a lot as a billet. The only thing you have to be careful with is they're sticky. And so for some things, if the stick is not where you want it, can be bad, but post-it notes can work great and I'm gonna I'll talk about that maybe a little bit in this video. Another common billet use is business cards. People will often print something on this side of their business card and leave the other side blank and use it as billets. But it's essentially just, you know, card size or small pieces of paper that we can have in almost like a deck often. Uh, sometimes they're isolated, but it depends. It's really just this piece of paper. This is a billet that we can now use for many, many different things. So now why do we use the billets? Well, one of the main uses is to obtain information, obtain secretly something that someone has written down on the billet. But there are also many other uses. Billets are a great thing to always have with you if you're performing, even if you're only doing card magic, I feel, because they're great also for making predictions, and predictions is something that happens a lot in mentalism and card magic. You write down your prediction, you fold it up, and you hand it to someone to hold on to, right? It's the perfect size for them to hold in their hand once you folded it. It's also great for writing things down during performance. Sometimes I have little instructions or notes or you know, maybe I'm thinking out loud and I'm trying to divine something from someone and I'm writing down my thoughts. It's always great to have a, I recommend a Sharpie, but something to write with and some billets when you're performing. So one of the best things we can use this for, one of my favorite uses is for outs. Whether we have multiple outs written on different ones or if we get stuck in a sticky situation, these can actually get us out of it as an out, right? So there's those uses and, and some of my favorite reasons to have these around is because they can pretty much get me out of any situation in mentalism. And so they sort of act as a safety net. And one of the reasons that I choose to carry them around is because they can get me out of basically any situation in mentalism that I might find myself in. So now how to use these? There's so many different ways. Uh, peeking is one of the most common ways. So you find a way to secretly peek that information. There's thousands of different ways to do that. Uh, there's also like center tears where you're tearing it up and, and keeping hold of a piece of information. There's all the different slights too. Anything you can do with a deck of cards, you can pretty much do with this. You can do all kinds of different slights. You can force things. You have 52 different words written down and you can force one uh, just like you would with cards. So there's so many you know useful things that you can do with this, uh, which some of which we'll get into in a second. So now, do they work? That's a, a simple question I wanna answer and it sort of gets into the topic that I was discussing earlier where some people don't like to use these because they feel like either real mind reading, you shouldn't need to write things down, or they don't like carrying them and they don't like the idea of 
things being drawn or written, which I understand, but it just means you're not doing it right. We'll get into a discussion in a little bit about prop lists versus billets, but billets are super important and they allow you to achieve things, but they have to be done correctly. And how you do that is having the right justification. And so the main thing, the main goal I would say when you're using these is to make them feel like the afterthought. These have nothing to do with the trick. They have nothing to do with the method. That's the goal you're trying to put across to your audience. These don't have anything to do with it. And that's one of the reasons, and one great subtlety, is I keep these in my pocket and I don't have them sitting out on the table like they're a prop. They're a, oh, I got one of these. Hold on. We can just you know, use this because of whatever reason. And we'll get into those reasons now. So some of these justifications that can make these feel like an afterthought, like these weren't supposed to be part of the routine, but we're doing it for a reason, uh, not because it's the method, right? That's the main goal that you want to achieve with these. Always keep that in mind. These are an afterthought. So the first justification, one of my favorites, is when you're in a group setting, they write down their thought to show other people so that everyone can experience it. So all you would need to do, start with these away, in your pocket, not out. They are not a prop, right? You, I always recommend having your billets away. You have someone think of something completely separate. These are not in play at all yet. You have them think of whatever that piece of information is. As they're thinking about it, maybe even start to take some guesses before you pull out the billets. So that's one, one really nice subtlety I like to do. So let's say we've said an animal. Well, I might say, hmm, okay, I feel like this is like, um, maybe like a medium sized animal, maybe, Maybe it's a mammal, right? I'm just saying things that are likely to be true. It's likely to be a mammal, it's likely to be medium sized. You can say it has four legs, whatever. And even if they don't hit, it's fine. Uh, the goal is to just make it feel like you're getting something. And if you can say very general stuff, like it's a medium size, like what does that even mean? As long as they, you can get like even a partial yes, it shows that you're already on the right track and these have nothing to do with it, right? If it's a person, you can say, okay, I feel like, imagine what they look like, okay. And maybe you can take a, a shot at, you could say they have hair, right? Like you can say, take a shot at the eye color, right? Something like that. But again, if you get it wrong, it doesn't even matter. It just establishes and adds to the credibility of what you're doing and that it is a bit of a process, right? So even if you say, okay, I'm thinking I'm getting like brown eyes here and they're like, no, I'm like, okay, maybe let's, let's take this a different route. Keep think about uh, their age for me or something, right? You just take it a slightly different route. Now, how do we introduce these? At some point, not too far into it, you want to say, you know what? I want to get everyone involved so everyone can, uh, you know, experience uh, this, what's going on here. Or you could say something like, you're really hard to read and I need to read a few other people to get it all. I'm not going to be able to get the whole picture with just you. So, and now you take out your billet and you hand them the pen. You say, so just write it down. I'll turn away. I don't want to see it, uh, but just write, write something down and just show everyone else so that everyone knows what you're thinking, right? Now this is perfectly justified because we're at a show and we're doing, we're at a performance. Everyone of course wants to be involved, not just you. So let's say um, they're thinking of an animal and they write down zebra. Now, of course they've written this down and now you just need to peek it in whatever way you would like, right? I'm gonna talk about a few peaks here and, and in a second, but you would just peek it, right? So now we're just talking about how you introduce this. So it's written down, the piece of information is written down, lost into the deck, and I peek it, and now I know that it's zebra, say, for example. So that's one way to get it introduced, very nonchalant. Uh, make it seem like an afterthought, you know, you're, you know, you just want everyone to be involved. So just write it down. Just write, just write down what you're thinking. Just so you can show everyone what it is and then uh, maybe rip it up and you do a center tear or something like that. Right. So that's one way. Uh, another way that I love something that I do a lot is a souvenir, right? I say this is going to be amazing and you're going to want to tell people about it uh, afterwards. Again, no billets around, nothing like that. And I say, um, so I usually like to give people something to remember this moment with so they can tell it accurately. You know, I, I don't want you to forget. I want you to be able to go home, tell your family family, that sort of thing. So uh, here's what we'll do. I'll, uh, I'll just sign this. So I always start with a, a signature. So I'll often sign it in the bottom. And if you know the acidus peak, right, I can't teach that, but if you know it, I'd highly recommend it. Uh, my favorite way to peak things, it's the acidus peak. Um, you need to force like a certain area for this to work. And so you can sign it in one area. And then maybe I like to write their name across the top, right? So I say, what's your name? I write it across the top and I say, let me sign this. And then that forces them where to write the piece of information you need to peek. But um, it also plays very well with the souvenir 
sort of idea. So you say, here, uh, let's just make a little souvenir. I'll write your name, maybe the date, and I'll sign it. And now you say, all right, so just write down what you're thinking just so later you can have this souvenir and you can actually tell people um, exactly about this experience. So now they write down what they're thinking as a souvenir that they can hold on to. You get your peak, however, and you have them put that souvenir in their pocket away and it seems out of play. This is just an afterthought, a souvenir for them to take home later. It's not the method, right? So it's an afterthought. I love that souvenir idea. I do that a lot. Um, sometimes you'll be with a spectator who's, they verbalize that they're afraid they're going to forget it. Or often you can say, okay, so you won't forget the animal you're thinking of and they're, they kind of hesitate and you say, okay, just to make sure I understand it can be hard to remember, a lot of pressure, just write it down here so you won't forget it. That's a simple, really great uh, reason, right? Again, it's an afterthought, especially if it can come up organically where they are the ones who you say, you know, you won't forget it and they're like, they kind of give you that look, just straight away. You say, you know what, here, we'll do this instead. Boom, and now you've done your peak. Of course, you can try for that out every time. Every time you, you have someone think of something, you say, you won't forget it, will you? Then if you get that unsure response, you do this. If not, then you say, you know what, let's do a souvenir. And you go into the souvenir reason instead, or you go to show everyone else. And the souvenir one is great for one-on-one -on -one performances, right? Because you don't have the, the reason, oh, I want you to show everyone else. And then uh, a couple other ideas are to have them be able to focus and visualize. You can say like, you know, our brain processes thousands of thoughts a second. And for me to read you, I really need to get that thought in your mind and I find that handwriting, uh, writing things down actually, you know, like in school when you study and you write things down, uh, it helps you remember it more. So this will help you focus more. So just write it down and then I'd have them, you know, stare at it for a bit, focus on it, visualize it, even if it's a picture, a word, whatever. And now they get, they, you know, put it away and I go into my peak of choice. But again, this is just about how to justify them writing it down on a billet. And this is all about making it feel like an afterthought. And all of these justifications make it feel like an afterthought. You also have the option, one I don't prefer to use, but some people like it is you tell them because, you know, uh, lately I've been uh, having people trying to pull a fast one on me. They change their mind. They don't stay honest. Now I don't think you're that type of person, but just to be sure as an insurance policy, just write this down and then we can make sure and just keep you honest, right? So you have them write it down so that they can't um, pull uh, pull your leg, right? Or they can't change their mind last minute. So that's another one. I don't choose to use that. My favorites are the souvenir and to show everyone else. I use those a lot. Um, so those are the justifications. You can see when this is an afterthought and you know they just write it down and it gets thrown away, that's why it's so good. And that's one of the reasons I love the acidus peak because they just, you know, they fold up the billet, I get the peak and they immediately, like they're holding onto it. It never really comes back into my hands. So they feel, so it's literally just like they write it down, put it in their pocket is essentially what it feels like to them. I would highly recommend you check out that peak. You can find it at any good magic dealer. Remember the goal here is to not draw importance to this whatsoever. You know, if, if they feel that you feel this is important, they'll know that, okay, this matters that I wrote it down. But it doesn't matter. It's just a little souvenir. It's just so they don't forget, whatever. Um, we, we really want them to forget about the use of this completely, okay? Forget about the use of the billet and make it not seem important. It's just an afterthought, just something we spontaneously are using. And one of the ways we can make this, make them forget about it and make it not seem important is to have a lot of presentation. So imagine this. Imagine I have you write something down, um, I, maybe I shuffle it into the deck, and then I say, zebra. I must have saw it at some point. Now, if we change that, you write it down, shuffle it into the deck, and I say, okay. I want you to imagine you're a young kid. You're uh, maybe 10 years old, and your parents take you on a special vacation. You don't really know where you're going, but you end up in, a, in, an, in an environment It's warm, and they surprise you, they took you to a zoo, right? And you're walking through this and you see the different animals, maybe you see an elephant, a tiger. And as you approach this one cage, kind of near the end of your day, the sun's starting to come down, you see this one animal in there, and this is the animal you're thinking of, okay? And you focus on that animal, okay? Focus on it for me. This is something you, you might actually find in a zoo, okay, interesting. And it's got something unique about the way it looks. Okay, focus on maybe how big it is. It's like, let's go with the letters. I'm struggling a bit on the image. Think of the word for me. Okay, repeat the first letter in your mind. Keep saying it, keep saying it like Z, Z, Z. Okay, perfect. You went for a zebra, didn't you? You see how that is drawn away so far from the billet that it, they don't even remember. There's a couple things going on. I told a big story, so they're concentrating on the story and what I want them to do, not the billet. The other thing, time delay, puts a lot of time between the billet and this makes it feel less important, more like an afterthought. Maybe the most important thing that it does, and this is gonna be a video all on its own, but it establishes my method. 
We want them to believe that I have a different method of reading their mind, okay? The billet is not the method. Whatever the heck I just did there, the story, the having them repeat it, all this nonsense is the method. And that's why having a process as a mentalist and a method is so, so, so crucial. And again, this is gonna be a video on its own, maybe the next episode, just because of how important this is, but you need to have a process, okay? A process will take your method away from having to be a billet and put it on whatever the heck your process happens to be. Maybe it's you have to hold their hands, you have to touch their shoulders. Whatever your process is, you need one because it'll. you see how far the time delay takes us from the billet, the story makes them forget about the billet, and then the process, they believe that whatever I'm doing now is how I figured it out, not the billet, right? That's why it's so important. You need to make it about the reveal and not the billet. Make everything in mentalism you do about the reveal and not how you got the information, okay? So you always need to have a nice hyped up reveal. The final thing, and this is sort of gonna relate to us in our card magic. If we think of card magic, we think about fairness all the time. You know, the spectator, never you never touched the cards, spectator shuffled. Those are the same ideas we wanna apply to a billet. We wanna make it feel like, you know, they maybe mixed up the billets if you're, you know, putting it back to do your peek. Uh, you never touched it is really the ultimate goal. You never touch the billet. They just write it down and maybe put it in their pocket or mix it into the deck. And that's always the goal you're going for. Just like in card magic, the fairer we can make the writing process until the point where the billets go away and there's no way that I can see it, the fairer the better, right? The fairer that is, if they, even if they're grilling you and they have no idea how you did it, then they're not gonna assume that's how you did it. Then you combine this with all these other techniques and you are well on your way. So quickly, before we jump into a few different peaks that I will touch on here, um, let's talk about billets versus prop lists. Now this is an interesting conversation and as you can see, billets can be made to feel completely propless and that is really where I think they thrive. If you use these techniques, I've given you some gold techniques, some really beep gold techniques, okay? Um, the techniques are so powerful. Getting them to disassociate everything from these billets is exactly what you need to make it feel like you never used a billet and it was propless all along. Now, I am a huge fan of propless mentalism. I do a lot of propless material that exists only up here and it's just through my words, but they aren't always perfect. They don't always hit. And that's why I always carry billets because Basically every propless routine that I do, I have an out prepared in case it doesn't work perfectly. And they often involve a billet, something like a one ahead or multiple outs, which again, we will talk about in other videos, but these can be used to save you from basically any situation in mentalism. Just like you have our, our favorite, oh, that's interesting. I can't see your card here because before we started, I put one card in my pocket, that out. We have the invisible deck out, right? Those kind of outs with card magic, they're the same things that exist in mentalism, these safety nets. So to me, propless and billets work the best together. I may always choose to start with a propless piece, but I have my billets ready in case it goes wrong, and then I'll move into maybe a billet piece afterwards. The propless and billets work so well together because the propless establishes that you can already do what it is you're doing without them needing to write anything down. So when they do write something down, it doesn't matter because I've already, he's already done, he's already read my mind without me writing anything down, right? So they are best used together because sometimes prop list is not gonna work. So you have the billet out. Sometimes you're gonna need, you know, to figure out a piece of information that there's not really a prop list routine designed to figure out. So these techniques together can work so well. And the nice thing about propolis, and again, we'll do an episode all about propolis mentalism, but propolis gets you so good with your scripting and presentations that you can shift that to your billets to hype up your reveals and make your presentations a lot better. So they are both needed. There's a time and place for each of them, but they work best together. You can make a billet routine feel propolis with the right scripting justifications and some of those techniques that I've talked to you about before. Again, imagine I just said I want to make you a souvenir just so you remember this. You can tell your family about it later and you have something to really remember this performance. I sign it, write your name. I say here, just write, write down what you're thinking there just so later you know you can tell everyone the story properly. Then you take this, you fold it up, you put it in your pocket and at some point I peeked it. But that's there's no billet involved. That's the rest, This is all no props, right? Same reason I think phones can, are considered propless. I mean, the phone's a little different. We have it on us all the time. It's essentially a part of us now. It's not really a prop, but the billets we can make technically as a magician, yes, they're props, but we can make it feel 
problem. So let's get into the tutorial section. We're gonna start off with a simple peak, one thing that I believe I have touched on before, but it's something Peter Turner uses, one of the greatest mentalists we got of this uh, era. And so do not underestimate the simplicity. It is fantastic. So how this peak looks is again, we'd use one of our justifications. So let's say I said, think of any animal, the billets are away, right? They're not in play, they're not even on the table, they're in my pocket and I say, you know, I want you to think of any animal, uh, maybe something important to you, something maybe you saw as a kid, or maybe one you've never seen before that you just want to see. Right, I establish a little bit of a story. Mentalism is all about the story. Let's say we're in a group of people, and I'll start to say, okay, focus on this animal. Okay, I'm thinking it's about, it's maybe like a medium-sized animal. Okay, it's got fur as well, yeah, okay. Uh, you know what, I want everyone, I want everyone to be able to be involved here so everyone can, can know kind of the process here, so why don't, uh, oh, okay, here, let's use this. Why don't you just, just write down, there you go, just write down what it is you're thinking of, show everyone, and uh, let's do that instead. So then that, now they'd take it, they'd write down zebra, right? Now you have your stack of billets for this first peak, and now you just, your head turned the entire time, you say, all right, just place that on top, perfect, just like that, and uh, we'll leave that over there. So, uh, I want you to focus on this animal, imagine, you know, you're young, you go to a zoo, boom, and I've got my peak in that action. So after my head's turned, I have them place it on top and all I'm doing is peeling off this card with the thumb and shuffling the rest on top to control it to the bottom. Super simple peak and then if I want to add an extra shuffle I'll just pinch you know with this finger with the middle finger and the thumb and and slip off milk both of those cards keeping it on the bottom and shuffle off, off on top so we get this and I shuffle these on top right. It's a very simple card slight I'll link it here I've taught it before um, and it just keeps that card on the bottom. So it starts on top, peel off that one card to the bottom, and then you pinch both and keep them both there. And the goal is to just maintain the card on the bottom, but very casually, very nonchalant. So your head's turned the whole time. Keep in mind, they place on top, you say, perfect. Um, just don't forget your, your, your animal for me, of course, and now everyone else knows what it is, so we'll, we'll leave those over there. And all I do, once it's on the bottom, is I grip it in sort of a biddle grip over top like this, and I just casually slightly tilt it. And at this angle, I can read exactly what it is without fully coming up like this. So it's just a very slight, I say, all right, don't forget your animal, of course. Now everyone else knows what it is. And I just peek it like that. So it's in this hand, I pick it up. I say, now, don't forget your animal. And from this side, it's like this, don't forget your animal. And I can see it perfectly. I just glance down, now don't forget your animal. And I put it right back in this hand and set it down over there, okay? So you just, you kind of choreograph that in. So at speed, it's head turned, okay, place your card there, perfect. Um, don't forget your animal for us, that you know, would not be good, obviously. Um, but now everyone knows your animal, so it's perfect. And I get my peak. Now obviously it's on the bottom, but again, this is so far out of play, it doesn't even matter. And if we come back to it later, we can just shuffle it into the middle and uh, show them that their card was in the middle or something, right? You know, you don't wanna say, okay, we're gonna mix this card into the middle and uh, we'll put those over there so that no one can no one can see it and forget about it. We don't wanna put any of those thoughts that I saw or anything like that. We just literally take the card back, shuffle it into the middle, just so say, you know, we'll, we'll mix it up, um, but uh, don't forget your animal for me. And then I do my peek and I set those down over there. And now I just ignore them, right? I don't go anywhere near them, I ignore them. And that's all I need to draw as little attention as possible to those billets. And that's the peak. It's a very simple peak from the bottom of the deck. Uh, and it's fantastic. It works. It's super simple. And trust me, it works well. You just need to justify it and make sure now that you have a nice, good presentation. So that's a Peter Turner idea. Now I'm going to show you a peak of mine. Uh, I call it the pivot peak. And it's a, it's a very nice, has some great subtleties into it. So uh, here's how that would look. So uh, we'd have our, our stack of billets, maybe away in the pocket. I have them think of an animal. And then I say the souvenir justification. I say, you know, I want to leave you with a bit of a souvenir here. So um, I take out a blank card, obviously, and we write down, I sign it, they write their name. And now I say, perfect. I have my head turned. I say, throw that on top. And I'll mix that into the middle of the deck, just like that. Now, you can see right here, not on the bottom, not on top. Um, and we'll even here, we'll even take it and put an elastic band around it like this and you can hold on to that in your hands like that. And in that, I got my peak. Now, that is uh, one, uh, one of my preferred ways to peak. This is how I'll often peak if I'm not using Acidus and I'm doing less sort of a stack peak with billets. But all you need to do is keep that zebra on top of the deck or control it back to the top. So here's what I usually do. So again, they set it on top 
and I say perfect, we'll just lose that into the middle. I shuffle it once to the bottom using the exact same method from before, pull it off with the thumb, shuffle everything on top. And then I just casually do one more shuffle where I pick it up and now I'm just shuffling off and then running cards until I get to that one last card and throw it back on top. So now it's back on top. So you strip it off to the bottom, shuffle it, pick up again. So now it's here and I just pull them off until it ends up back on top. So the sequence just looks like this, boom, and it's back on top. Now I flip the cards over in my hand. Okay. So I flip them over. So now it's face up, but on the bottom. And now I pick it up in biddle grip. Okay. Two fingers on the front, thumb on the back with the index finger curled. And I say, look, it's not on the bottom. Okay. So I pivot both wrists. It's not on the bottom. And I come back and I say, it's not on top. And as I do that, I'm going to pinch here with the ring finger and pivot that card down, exposing all the writing like that. And to the front, it just looks like this. It's not on top. The nice thing is we're drawing everyone's attention here. So it makes sense that even my eyes are looking here. Everyone's eyes are here, but my, so are mine. But I'm, I really have this beautiful peak now in the back. Uh, and it doesn't matter if it's orientated like this, I get a perfect read from left to right. And if it's like this, it's still, because of the way your hand is, you can read it from either side. So it doesn't matter which way it's written, which way it's drawn, you'll always get the peak. So just to get a little bit more of those mechanics, so essentially what's happening is the ring finger's pinching and then the thumb is sliding everything else. Okay, so the ring finger pulls off that bottom card slightly, so you can watch it. Pulls it and it comes to the side and then the thumb carries the rest of the packet up and over as this ring finger continues to pinch and open up that card. Okay, so it's ring finger on this bottom corner. So that's the bottom. If you're holding it this way, it's the bottom right corner and it's going to just pull it to separate it a little bit, right? So again, it just applies pressure and it just pulls and it pops off. And then the thumb continues to carry this here, pivoting them off the bottom. Okay. Like this, as this continues, the ring finger continues to pull down and you get a nice open peak from the back. Okay. So I'll let you watch that here just like that. Okay. Ring finger pulls, thumb slides over and lifts off while these pull it down to get it exposed. So again, the pivot peak, they place it on top and you say, all right, we'll just lose that somewhere into the middle, flip it over. And I say, look, you can see it's not on the bottom, not on top and we're done. So from the, from this side, from the exposed view, not on the bottom, not on top. And I see it all in there. And then instantly, the second I get the peak, I come back, put everything into my hand and all under cover. And this gets just squared up in this hand. I say, you know what? Let's even put a band on this. And I wrap the band on it and I hand it to them to hold on to in their hands. And there's nothing to see on either side. So that's the pivot peak. Uh, let me show you from behind the, how it looks. So from behind the card gets placed on top, shuffled to the bottom, shuffled back to the top. Then I flip these over and then I say, look, it's not on the bottom, not on top. And that's when I get the peak and then it all comes into the hand like that. And we put the band around it. And what I love so much about this is the subtlety of the band. And again, how little the billets feel involved and how quick the peak happens. We don't even have to say, you know, so there's no way I could see it. You can, I don't think that's terrible to say, um, but you just say, you know, put the band on to keep it safe. And it's implied because it's not on the bottom or top. You're just doing that to show that, you know, there's no way I could have seen it. You don't need to say it though, right? You just say, yeah, it's not on the bottom, not on top. So we'll take it, we'll put a band around it and you can even hold on to those yourself. Okay. And that is, um, that's it. That's how you do it. It's, it's so, so great. So easy. It's got so many nice subtleties from being able to show both sides to uh, having them in their hands the whole time to putting the band on it. It's just such a great peak. I absolutely love it. But also just again, like to recommend the acidus peak. Uh, it's fantastic. So, so good. Um, and it's just, it's one billet. It, it's away from the stack and it's just such a good peak. So I'd recommend you go check that out. And then just a quick note with post-its. Post-its work really well. You just have to watch out for the sticky part. You know, you can't exactly shuffle post-its. That's the only problem, but they work well with the acidus peak and center tears and stuff like that. All right guys. So that's it for episode three of mentalism 101, all about billets. Uh, absolutely love billets and everything you can do with them. I'd highly recommend you get yourself a stack. I will link in the description, some options on Amazon and, and these billets in particular. I really like them. They're, they're easy to use, small, uh, easy to carry everywhere. You can even slide them in the card box with you. 
put them right in your pocket alongside it. It's great. You know, really focus on the techniques. I think the best thing I gave you guys in this video was how to justify using the billets, making them feel like an afterthought and unimportant. Uh, so remember, have your process and either use some of those souvenir justifications, showing everyone so you don't forget, whatever your choice is. It's good to have a bunch of those though so you can use them whenever you might need them. And then of course, you can use either one of those peaks that I showed you, work on the pivot peak, it's really awesome. You can even practice it with a deck of cards. Nothing here, nothing here and you just pivot off that bottom card if you want. So uh, it's, it's a really great peak. Drop a comment, let me know what you guys thought about this episode, drop a like on this video. Uh, if you guys would like to you know, work on this a little bit more, learn more peaking techniques, more about billets, you can check out the website, sign up for a private lesson. It's the best way for me to get to know you one-on-one -on -one and really help you get better at what you wanna work on. Mentalism, card magic, all that kind of stuff. It's great, so go check out the website. You can go check out the new merch too, the shirt with a built-in trick an awesome three phase routine built into the fabric of the shirt. You can check that out as well. And go check out this other awesome tutorial up here. So guys, with all that said, thanks for watching. And don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video.